Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a relatively recent research coming out of China about neutron star merger or neutron star collisions. And I wanted to start right here with the most famous neutron star, the Crab Pulsar. What you're looking at is known as the Crab Nebula. This is uh, something that you can actually see um, in the night sky if you have a telescope, even a relatively simple one. But what we are interested in is the thing in the middle, known as the Crab Pulsar. So I'm going to try to come close to it. And what you'll see is that this is actually a very powerful remainder of a supernova, a neutron star. But sometimes you get two neutron stars, just like you see right here. This is a very um, famous binary neutron star couple with an unofficial name after their discoverers, Taylor and Hulse. Now, eventually, these uh, binary neutron stars will most likely collide with each other, creating um, either a black hole or a very, very powerful neutron star known as a magnetar. And um, at the same time, they will produce a lot of energy. They'll produce gravitational waves. They will also produce a lot of precious elements and precious metals, like, for example, gold and platinum. Um, and we've learned all of this and we've confirmed all this back in October of 2017, when we observed the first ever neutron star collision. Now, you might have already heard about this and you may have seen my previous video about this, but essentially um, we are now convinced that upon a collision like you see right here, a tremendous amount of energy is created and either a black hole or um, a very powerful magnetar. Now, in this case, uh, we were wrong about the black hole. It's actually a magnetar that was made. And this is something that we've discovered um, maybe a year after the original discovery. But the um, study that I'm talking about today actually did a little bit more analysis. And what they realized is that um, apart from gravitational waves, uh, these collisions also release a lot of electromagnetic energy and specifically energy related to the magnetars themselves. The Chinese scientists behind the study were able to analyze and um, predict the kind and the amount of uh, various electromagnetic energy that was released as this happens. And um, they haven't really seen it until very recently. The prediction paper was actually published back in 2013 and it took them pretty much this whole time to finally find the data uh, proving their original theory. Uh, so they actually observed this particular event happening uh, from data in 2015. So basically, they kind of looked at the historical data and they realized that there was actually this, what you see on the screen right now, there was a, a very, very easy to spot, predict and analyze X-ray emission that matched their original prediction almost completely. So they realized that what we're seeing here, this huge flash actually was a neutron star collision that resulted in a very, very powerful magnetar. So powerful, as a matter of fact, that even being relatively far away from this magnetar would kill you instantly because of the tremendously powerful magnetic field. It's literally trillions and trillions of times more powerful than Earth itself, and at least a thousand times more powerful than a typical neutron star. So this is something that was created um, from this collision and was emitting those really powerful X-rays for at least half an hour. So powerful, once again, that it would probably kill anything in the vicinity. But after about seven hours, it actually dimmed and pretty much disappeared completely and is now practically invisible to us, mostly because it's actually really far away. All of this happened at a distance of 6.6 .6 billion light years away. Now, that's, that's really far. That's like 3,000 times more far away than the Andromeda galaxy. So we're not going to be able to see this anymore. But the fact that we're able to see these powerful X-ray emissions coming out of this location suggests to us, of course, that we now have a new way of finding these neutron star collisions by not just using gravitational waves, but also using the pattern that uh, the Chinese scientists predicted through various electromagnetic radiation. So in that sense, it's actually a pretty clever discovery. But then there's a question, did we actually also see the gravitational waves from this event? And the answer to this is most likely no, because one, back then, back in 2015, LIGO detector was not really that good just yet. But also at the same time, this is really far away, much farther away than previous uh, detections. 
However, the LIGO detector has now been updated and um, it can detect things really accurately. As a matter of fact, they've released an iPhone app where you can actually keep track of every new um, collision detection from various black holes or neutron stars colliding. Although maybe app is going a little bit too far, I think this would be enough. So this right here is the open database, Grace database of um, gravitational wave candidates. And pretty much every new candidate is placed here and then analyzed until we determine if this particular detection is just something happening nearby or if it's an actual black hole collision. So you can actually click on every one of them. This is all recent detections and I'm sure when you're watching this and when you're looking at it, there's going to be a lot more. This only started in um, April of 2019. But even recently, this is what they've discovered. You can actually check out this is one of the latest ones. And here's what you see inside. There is uh, the actual data that's visualized. And the most important part is the analysis on the bottom. And so here, this is the current um, conclusion about what we saw. BNS stands for binary neutron star. And so there's a 49% chance that what we've observed just now, very, very recently, basically a few hours ago from when I'm making this video, um, is a binary neutron star collision. This is usually revised though. And so eventually we'll have a conclusive result on what we just observed here. And all of this data is openly available and it's actually uploaded and analyzed in real time. So all of this is super, super recent. Like for example, if I look at the one before it, um, if I scroll down, you'll realize that this has now been confirmed with 99% precision that this is a binary neutron star collision. So we have now observed more of these binary neutron star collisions. And interestingly, scientists always thought and predicted that we're going to be able to detect at least one gravitational wave per week. And this is exactly what we're seeing now. With the upgraded and updated LIGO detector, we are now seeing at least one of these per week. Now, some of them are obviously from terrestrial sources or may not have enough conclusive data to actually uh, decide what they are. But a lot of these will be eventually classified as something. Like, for example, this is 96% terrestrial. So probably not a black hole colliding simply due to the data that we discovered and due to the analysis. And what I really love about this is the whole open source feel to it. Essentially making uh, data and your results and your analysis available to the public encourages um, various citizen scientists to try to either prove or disprove it, to try to discover things on their own, and to create this community around these discoveries that will then propel us to new heights. And I think this is something that is absolutely necessary in modern science because keeping the data to yourself and uh, only allowing certain scientists to look at it is not really going to help us advance that fast. So this whole open source approach to data analysis and to science in general is something that we absolutely need if we want to advance a little bit farther and learn new things a little bit faster. Now on that note, that's all I wanted to mention about the discovery of this collision of two neutron stars that resulted in an extremely powerful magnetar. And I wanted to show you that website where you can um, go and take a look at new discoveries and maybe even analyze them yourselves if you would like to. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned a little bit more about the universe and space from this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who would like to learn more about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye. And by the way, all the links that I've displayed here should be in the description below.